Hey everybody, how are you? I'm Rod Kaiser. Welcome to the Restoration Studio. And what we're going to work on today is a lateral break. I'm going to show you how to fix a lateral break on this piano bench. Okay, so a lateral break, horizontal break, straight across break, right? It is the most difficult re uh, repair to make um, when it comes to, to breaks on chair legs and table legs. A lateral break kind of usually means the piece is going to end up in the trash. It's a terminal illness. But if you know how to fix it and you know some little tricks and some little techniques and you know a guy named Rod, he's going to show you how to fix this. And we're going to be able to, you know, have the company back over again and not worry about them falling on their back because you did a bad repair. OK, so let's go into some of the products here that we're going to use um, for this project. Um, CA glue. Uh, this is something that we're going to be using in this project. Uh, Cyano Acro glue. It's a basically it's a super glue is what it is. Um, it's super glue, but it's in two parts. It's a adhesive. This is the adhesive. This is the accelerator. Um, so I'll show you how to use this. It's um it's a lot it's different than than the one part uh, super glue that you're going to get at the you know at the Home Depot store or whatever. Um, but it's a two part and it comes in three different consistencies usually. Um, thin medium and thick. This is medium that we're going to use in this project. All right, another thing that we have here are two drill bits. We're going to be using a 3 8 inch dowel. So I have a 3 8 inch drill bit um, and then a smaller 1 8 inch drill bit. Um, we're going to use a hardwood dowel. This is oak. Um, a Japanese pull saw. Okay, and I have two of them, um, a larger and a smaller. Um, we're going to be using those. And we're going to use tight bond wood glue. All right, these are basically the products that we're going to use in this video. So let's get into it. I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so the very first part of this project is for me to drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole. So you'll see later. Uh, in this process exactly why I'm drilling this hole and it'll all become clear to you. Okay, but we're going to drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole and I'm going to drill it as close to centered as I can, but with but it's not absolutely critical that this is centered and you'll again, you'll see why later, but I'm getting it as as centered as I can just by using my eye and drilling out this 1 8 inch pilot hole. All right, so um, I kind of messed up a little bit and forgot to turn the camera on. I'm sorry about that. Um, so, uh, but if I would have turned the camera on, what you would have seen me doing was actually the, one of the most important steps of this process. I cut this part of the leg off and I used the Japanese hand saw, the pull saw, okay, and I just methodically flush cut this part of the leg off. Okay, um, I mean, wasn't anything real high tech, but the, the pull saw, these, these Japanese pull saws are just absolutely wonderful for this. Um, and you can get a perfect flush cut, um, you know, using these saws. So I went ahead and I cut this off and this is a really important part. <laughs> but yeah, so we cut this, uh, so we cut this off flush using the Japanese pull saw. Okay, so now that I've cut that leg and I have it, uh, the, the top button part, um, I'm going to glue this back onto the leg to make the leg complete again. And I'm going to, so what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have it fit perfectly because I'm going to use CA glue. All right. So what you saw me do is just sort of line it up and lay it down so that I know now I can pick it back up again. And when I go to reassemble it, I already kind of have it lined up and I, I'll pop it right on there so it's lined up perfectly. Why? Because the CA glue is um, basically like super glue, right? So it, it'll bond really quickly. Therefore, I don't have a whole lot of working time. So I want to make sure that I'm, you know, when I, when I place it, the two pieces together, that I already have them lined up. Now I put the glue on the one side, I'm putting the activator on the other part and I'm now going to 
just assemble them. All right, so once I have them have the, the two parts assembled, I'm just going to use some hand pressure and hold it for, you know, 10 seconds or so, um, and my bond will be complete. Okay, and with that, our leg is now assembled back together and we can start to actually do our repair. So how we're going to complete this repair is if do you recall the 1 8 inch pilot hole we just drilled not too long ago. We're now going to follow that up. So I'm going to use a 3 8 inch drill bit and I'm going to use that pilot hole as my guide. And I'm going to enlarge that pilot hole using the 3 8 inch drill bit. So I'm just going to take my time here and make sure that I follow that pilot hole that I have. Um, so I want to just really all I'm trying to do here is take that 1 8 inch pilot hole and make that exact same hole 3 8 of an inch. And we're going to follow this up later um, and this is going to be the, the hole for our dowel that which is really going to create uh, you know all of our strength in this repair. So now I'm going to move on to the leg, and this is the leg that I have reassembled after cutting the button off. And again, I had that eighth inch pilot hole that I had drilled in here, um, which is going to align up perfectly with the eighth inch uh, pilot hole that is on the base of the bench. So I'm going to do the exact same process here. I'm just going to drill it out and expand that eighth inch hole to a three eighths inch hole. So you'll take notice that I have a piece of green tape um, on my drill bit. I pre-marked my drill bit to be sure that when I drill out this 3 8 inch hole that I go beyond where the break was on the leg. So I want to make sure that I drill this hole beyond that point and deep enough so that when I put my dowel in uh, it serves the purpose that it's intended for and that is go beyond that break and give my repair a lot more strength. And on to the next step. The next step is I'm going to mark the dowel uh, where that with that piece of tape. So I now, because I want to now figure out the length that I'm going to cut this dowel. So I'm going to make it uh, the length of that piece of tape times two, but I'm actually going to go a little bit shorter so that my dowel isn't too long. All right, then I'm just using that smaller uh, Japanese pull saw and cutting the dowel. The next thing I want to do is I want to put some notches in the dowel, some grooves uh, so that it holds the glue. All right, so I'm going to use this little um, this little tool that I have to cut notches out. Now you can just use, you know, you can use a nail. You can scratch scratch the notches in with a the nail. There's all kinds of different ways that you can do this, but they do make this handy little tool. And essentially, all you do is just knock it through the three eighths inch hole um, on this tool. And what I'll do is I'll spin it around a couple times. The first time, it's you know, the, the, the toughest to get through. Um, then it slides through a little bit easier each time. And I'm just going to use the hammer and knock it through. And what it's doing is it's cutting little notches um, into this dowel. And I'll do it like three or four times and I'll spin it a little bit each time. So I make my notches all the way around. So we have our dowel cut now. And pre-sized, we're now going to take some uh, tight bond wood glue and I'm going to use a, a little bit of a brush and make sure I spread the glue out real nice in this hole um, and on the very top of, of the where the leg goes and just spread the glue out evenly. I'm then going to put my dowel in and tap it in place and I'm going to make sure that it sinks all the way into this hole. So you get a nice kind of a, 
a solid sound to it when it hits bottom. Now what I'm doing is before I put any glue onto the leg, I'm just kind of pre-fitting it to make sure that my hole is deep enough. All right. Once I determine that my hole is deep enough and it's all going to fit together nicely, I'm going to do the same process with the spreading of the glue uh, on the leg. And I'm just going to, you know, rub it or wipe it around and make sure that all my surfaces are covered with this brush with the, uh, the, the type bond wood glue. I'll put a little bit of glue on the dowel and then I'll be able to assemble my two pieces. All right, so and now I'm going to just assemble this leg and make sure that it lines up perfectly straight so that everything looks, you know, uh, factory again and that my repair was, you know, successful. It does. It lines up uh, perfect and it's everything is straight. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to flip the bench over and I'm going to use weight as opposed to using a clamp. So this is a 50 pound weight and I'm going to set it on top of my repair. This weight will act as a clamp, but a clamp would have a tendency to want to pull my, uh, my leg out of shape. So the weight is just going to sit overnight, let the glue dry and my repair is complete. So now we're going to wrap this job up by doing a little bit of cosmetic repair. All right. So as you can see, I'm sanding it with some 220 sandpaper and our repair lined up so perfectly that there's hardly any sanding to do. It was uh, really lined up perfect. So I'm using some 220 sandpaper and just sort of going around, making sure everything is nice and smooth. And I'm going to put a little bit of wood filler in if necessary and sand that all smooth and we'll go ahead and touch this up so that it's basically our, our repair is invisible. So once we're sanded smooth, I'm going to take some Mohawk pre-catalyzed aerosol lacquer and spray my repair. So I have some raw wood basically exposed um, from sanding it. So I want to build that up a little bit. I'm going to use uh, this Mohawk aerosol lacquer. I'm going to spray it three or four times. I'll come back. It dries in like 10 minutes. Um, so I'll come back and spray it a couple times, build up a little bit of a base coat, and then I'm going to go over that and all I'm going to do for my repair is use a couple gel stains. So I'm just using this Minwax gel stain and I'm using a, a brush uh, and I'm mixing these two colors together because I didn't have one color that really matched properly. So I'm using coffee and mahogany um, and a combination really of the two and it gives me the color that I want. So I'm just basically just covering up my repair. Um, I'm just brushing and and you know, feathering out um, this gel stain uh, over my repair and it'll give me the color and the look that I want and make this repair basically invisible. So I'll just continue to feather this out um, until I have pretty much full coverage and I like the way that it looks. And then I'm going to come back over. So I'm going to let this gel stain sit and dry for, you know, for a few hours. And then I'll come back and I'll spray over top of it with the aerosol lacquer and give me my, uh, my final finish. I'll put like two coats of aerosol lacquer on it and this job will be done. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, give us a like if you did. Uh, please leave a comment down below. To let us know what you think. And, you know, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.